Also going to have uh, men's breakfast this Saturday at Dan's Diner at 7.30. Is that right, Brother Tim? All right, so need more information about that, get with Brother Tim. And I've got a question for you all this morning. Where is the life? Where is the life? My title for this morning is Where is the Life? Daniel chapter 9, in verse 25, says, and this is Daniel's prophecy of the Antichrist. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandments to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks, and the street shall be built again in the wall, even, trouble, even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And by the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And this has already come to pass. And the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined." Now this gets a little bit into the future, and Matthew refers to this that I'm about to talk to as the abomination of desolation when it enters into the temple. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, talking of the Antichrist. And in the the middle of the week he shall cause the sacrifices and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation and the determined shall be poured upon the desolate. You may be seated. In the Old Testament, and you have to understand that Orthodox Jews today believe in the first five books of the Bible, the Torah. The first five books, that is their, that is their Bible. And I believe in the first five books of the Bible too. We have uh, that in common us and Orthodox Jews, and we have a lot of other things in common as well. And there are Messianic Jews that believe exactly the way that we believe and have, have received the truth of Jesus, but the Orthodoxy has not. Now, in the Old Testament, and I heard it asked the other day, why did Jews not keep the sacrifice now? They said, well, there's no temple. There's no temple, but they're planning on rebuilding the temple, and they're planning on resuming in the sacrifice. That's always been in the plan. And in the Old Testament, but they say we keep our holidays, our high holy days. That's how we kind of keep our religion is our, we keep our holy days. And so, but in the Old Testament, and it was, in Leviticus, it was required that for sacrifices to be given, for blood sacrifices to be given to cover over sin. Now, not to redeem sin, not to forgive sin but to cover over sin. And uh, so that in every year, the high priest would, would kill the lamb, and he would walk in, and this would be a representative of all the sacrifices that had been given that year, and he would walk with a bowl of that blood into the holiest of holies, into where the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat that sat upon the Ark of the Covenant between the two cherubs. And he would take that hyssop, And he would dip it into that blood and he would spatter that upon the mercy seat so that it would cover all the sins that had been put under the blood of animals, of goats and sheep and birds for that year. It would cover that. And for another year, those that were of the house of Israel, their sins would be covered for one more year. And... The first example of blood sacrifice covering man's sin is in the Garden of Eden. Whenever man, whenever Adam and Eve first sinned and they realized that they were naked, they went and they got themselves some plants to cover up with, some fig leaves. We've got a fig tree out here. It'd take quite a few leaves to cover me, <laughs> I'll tell you. Brother Tim, I'd have to do a whole lot of sewing to make myself an apron of of fig leaves. They're just about this big, you know. But whenever God came in the cool of the day and he was going to walk with Adam and Eve, that was the thing that he loved to do the most. The thing that God loved to do the most is to commune with his people. He loved to walk in the cool of the day. And actually, Adam was 
a son of God. He was formed from the ground, but he was a son of God, and he could look upon the glory of God and not die because he was, he was immortal. And so, but God loved communing with his people until the day that the people, now I want you to understand this, the people made a decision to be disobedient. The people are the ones who walked away from God. God never walked away from people. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. God never walks away from people. If you are separated from God today, he never walked away from you. At some point, we've been separated by sin from him. And when the high priest would make the daily sacrifice in the morning and the evening for, to, for the covering of the sin, and you would have to take your animal and lead it through the camp, lead it through your neighborhood so everybody would know, oh, I know what old Jim's been up to. And if you committed a certain sin, you had to have a certain kind of animal. And so it, it was a confession to everybody you know that, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make sacrifice. I'm going to the temple, and I'm going to give this to the high priest. I'm going to give this as a covering of my sin. I'm going to give this to the high priest, and they're going to bleed it dry. And it's a covering for my sin. And you know, the, the devil hated that. The enemy hated that because the enemy wants your sins exposed. They want you, your sins to be destructive in your life. He doesn't want your sins to be covered. He doesn't want your sins to be forgiven. He hated the priests that offered those sacrifices. And he hated them as much as he hates the preachers and the teachers today. Let me tell you something. You want to be hated? You be a, a truth teacher, a truth preacher. Man, enemies will come out of the woodwork, brothers and sisters. But for any sin that has been committed, blood has to be spilled. Another example of that was the Passover. To where, and I talked about that last week, where the Passover, the lamb, the lamb had to be slain and the blood applied. We talked about that last week to the doorpost and the lintel. And you know what? Why does this church exist? Why, did those of you who gave in tithe today, and I want to thank you for giving your tithe today. For those of you who gave in the offering today, I want to thank you for that. For those of you who sit on the board and, and, and we decided to purchase this building. For those of you who got out of bed this morning and came and worshiped. For those of you who sang and played. For those of you who taught and studied. All of it for, is for one reason. For one reason only and no other reason. It is to seek and to save that which was lost. And I want to tell you something. The best news I've heard all day is at least four people are going to be baptized in the only saving name today, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of their sins. That is why we exist. If you've made that decision, that's the reason that we exist. But the Passover, once you stepped beyond that that lintel of that house and that doorpost, you were safe. And as long as you stayed in the house, you were safe. And if you pass through the waters of baptism, as long as you will stay in repentance, as long as you will stay in that spirit, you are safe. You've got nothing to worry about. I talked to a, an elder saint this week that said, I just hope that I can make it. And I said, sister, don't you ever fear. Don't you ever fret. Don't you ever be anxious because I know your life. I know I, I've watched you. You've been an example to me. Don't you ever have a fear or a doubt or an anxiety because the Lord has got you. He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. I might make a decision to leave him, but he's never going to leave me. But all the sins that were rolled forward by the sacrifice of animals, by the high priest spattering that upon the mercy seat, all of those sins that were rolled forward, there came a man 
that had been prophesied about throughout the millennia. That man was God manifested in flesh, the Son of God, the only begotten, the only born Son of God. The prophecy here in Daniel, though, is of the opposite of him. The Antichrist is the devil manifested in the flesh. And I want to tell you something. I I told you the good news. But the devil, you see, my, my dad and I were sitting in a bass boat this week, and he made a statement that stood out to me. And it is so true. It is so true, and I knew this, but it is just so true. that, And a lot of us don't understand this. But I want you to understand this right now, that God has done everything that He can do. He's, he, uh, t- the only thing that He could do is force me, and He has promised that He will not force anyone. But he did everything that he could do. He robed himself in flesh. He came and dwelt among us. He suffered the death of the cross. He became sin so that I might become, you might become his righteousness. He did everything. Then he, on the third day, he rose again. Praise God. He did everything. God did everything that he could do to save us. He is not a vengeful God unless you are an enemy of the cross. You say, well, how can God be merciful and vengeful? But he's going to be merciful if you partake in the sacrifice. I'm sure that there were people that committed sins that were like, you know what? I don't have any livestock to spare. And, you know, I don't want to pull this goat down through the camp so everybody can see what I did. So I'm just going to be disobedient. I'm going to hide my sin. Instead of my sin being covered, my sin's just going to be hidden. So no one will know. But God knows. God can see your sin. And so, the devil that hates you, why does he hate you? Because you're a child of God. You're potentially a child of God. You're the bride of of his sworn enemy. And he hates you and he wants to destroy you. He hated the Levites before you. He hates us now. It is Satan's desire. Get this. This is a very big crux right here. It is Satan's desire for each and every one of us to cause the sacrifice to cease. It has been his desire from the beginning to make the sacrifice of Christ of no avail in our lives. And that is still his purpose today. I I mentioned a few minutes ago, where can you go and feel this? Unfortunately, not many places. Where can you go and hear this? Unfortunately, not many places. I uh, was doing some reading, and we've all heard these statistics. Gallup says that in 2023, fewer people professed Christianity than ever before in the United States. That church attendance is dropping sharply, sharply in the United States. And that that people who profess any faith at all is dropping very sharply in the United States. How can that be? How can that be whenever God himself had nails driven in his hands? When God himself had nails driven into his feet? Whenever he had a crown of thorns thrust upon his brow? When he had a spear after he was dead? A spear thrust into his side. How can that be? That God who made the way, 
God who prepared the way for each and every one of us that more and more people are walking away, I've got, I do believe that I've got the answer today. Because I'll tell you, I will tell you the truth whenever Jesus said, it is finished. He didn't mean my life is over. I don't believe he meant, you know, I'm, a, I'm, about, to, I'm about to go Whenever he said, it is finished, I believe he was saying, for those of you who play chess, checkmate Satan. For those of you who will participate in this sacrifice, for those of you that will, the way that I tell you to, the way that Peter is going to reveal to you in the book of Acts chapter 2, if you will just but obey and participate in the sacrifice, it's over for you, Satan. This is the ultimate sacrifice once and for all. And yet, less than 50% of Americans even claim Christianity. Immorality is at an all-time high. You know, it, it, it really is no wonder to me either. I listen to preachers and I, I watch preaching and I listen to Christian radio Sometimes, sometimes I listen to Christian songs and I think, you know what? I know a lot of country songs that are more popular or that are more positive. You know, country songs is, you know, my dog died, my wife left, wrecked my truck, grandma got ran over by a reindeer, you know. It's, it's. But you listen to some Christian music and it's, oh, you know, it, it's, Gloom, despair, and agony on me. I'm like, turn this over. You listen to preachers that have some great ideas, and you know what? There's some religions out there. I've studied most of them. There's some religions out there that have some pretty good ideas, have some pretty good thoughts. I, there, there's, I mean, like I said, you've got you to gotta call a spade a spade. There, are, you know, in Taoism or, or Buddhism, not, uh, not all of it is just a terrible way to think, but it's missing something. What are we missing? What's the world missing? What is the church missing? Now, this church, this is an exception, and I'm going to tell you why in a few minutes. Our church attendance is up. We had 12 new people join the church last week. Four people were being baptized in Jesus' name today. And I'm thankful for that harvest. But what are we not doing right? What are, are the churches of today not doing right? You know the story of the keys to the kingdom. Jesus gave the keys to the kingdom to one man. His name is Peter. And the plan of salvation was laid out by Peter. Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth, Peter, I will bind in heaven. I'm giving you the keys to my kingdom so that whatever you bind, and I never carry my keys when I talk about the keys of the kingdom. But... I've got a clicker to the kingdom. But the, uh, but the keys to the kingdom, what does a key do? It opens up the kingdom. It opens up the door to the kingdom. And so in order to get into the kingdom, in order to reside in the kingdom, I need a key to get there. And the only man that had the keys, the only man that had the authority to bind on earth and in heaven was the Apostle Peter, and whenever he stood on the day of Pentecost and he said, repent, and it's simple. You talked about Naaman. You know, he wasn't asked to do anything difficult. He was just asked, hey, I tell you what, you'll be healed of your leprosy when you go dip seven times in the Jordan. How hard is that? And he said, well, if you had given me something harder to do, I would do it. If you'd give me something great to do, but this seems stupid. This seems too easy. Well, let me tell you something. Participating in the sacrifice of Christ, it's easy. It's easy. The other way is hard. Just repent. 
Turn away from your sins. Leave your sins at the altar. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission, the washing away, not the covering, but the remission of your sins. you got to understand, when Jesus hung on that cross, he hung in the middle of time and space. He, he, that was the very middle of everything. And all the sins that had been rolled forward for the house of Israel before, he took those upon himself. In all of you, for everyone who was willing to partake in the blood sacrifice, in the Old Testament, the way the Levitical law laid out, he took those upon himself. And for every one of you who is willing to partake in his sacrifice, the way that Acts 2.38 lays out. But you know, Brother Jim, there's got to be another way. And we've been trying to figure out another way. The enemy, the devil, Lucifer, Satan, Beelzebub has been trying to figure out another way to get you to believe that this is how you participate or this is how you participate or this is how you do it or hey, you can do your own thing. Jesus understands. He gets us, right? Well, what, I, what I, you better get is baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen? Because unfortunately for some of us, Jesus does get us. That got quiet. It's very simple. Repent. Be baptized in his name. You're taking on, you're you're being washed in his blood. And then the promise is that he will sanctify you with his spirit you shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. And he gives you that promise that's to you, to your children, to everyone who's willing to be obedient. But the enemy, the devil, Beelzebub, whatever you want to call him, he's got another plan. Because his ultimate plan is to cause the cessation, the ceasing, stop the sacrifice. At all cost. We must stop the sacrifice. How many, how many preachers are standing behind a pulpit today preaching the message that I'm preaching? That you need to be, repent of your sins, be baptized in his name, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. How many? That's what the church is missing. They're missing the point of his sacrifice. I'm going to do these in quick succession back there, these scriptures. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 11. It says, I indeed, and this is talking about John the Baptist, said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, and that's talking about Jesus, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And you know, Jesus himself walked on down there to the Jordan River and was baptized in that river. You say, well, he didn't have any sins. Why was he baptized? It's because it was Hebrew tradition that before you got married, you were to be baptized. You were to be washed in water. And he was baptized, and, and of course we know the voice came from heaven saying, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And so he was preparing himself to marry us. He was preparing himself for marriage under the Hebrew tradition. And whenever the four of you, or maybe, maybe there are six of you, I'm just fishing here. There may be six, five of you or six of you that are going to be baptized in Jesus' name today. But if you do enter into that covenant, it's an eternal covenant that I will, if you will, if you will just be obedient, I will forgive you of your sins. I will wash them away as far as the east is from the west. I will write your name in the Lamb's book of life and no one can take you out of my hand. 
If you will, I will. Today, I'm going to baptize at least four or six. Whenever they pierce the side of Christ, after he had died, they were going to break his legs, but they walked up to him and said, well, he's already dead. So they pierced him. And out of his side, out of him flowed mingled blood and water. And today, those of you who are baptized are going to be baptized in his mingled blood and water that flowed all the way from the foot of that cross right in here to Bryan, Arkansas today. And you will forever have access to that mercy and to that grace. You will forever, you have to understand, I think you're all pretty, right? I think you're all lovely, but none of you are as lovely as her. None of you look as good to me as her. When you become the bride of Christ, when your name is written in that book, whenever he writes his name on his temple like he talks about in Revelation, you become his bride. You become the bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, and you have favor with God. And you're going out and you're coming in. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will forever have favor with God. He will dispatch angels to have charge over you for the rest of your life. You've got to understand who it is you are becoming. Today is the most important day of your life. It is the day that that no day before this has ever been as important and no day after this will ever be as important as this day is. Because you are being married To Christ. I'm going to baptize you in the water and in the blood. And then Jesus, the Holy Ghost baptizer, will baptize you. He's promised to baptize you in his spirit. There is a condition. It's actually considered in Catholicism a blessing called stigmata. Anybody ever heard of that? Raise your hand if you've heard of stigmata. Be careful, I may call on you. Stigmata. It's where we get the, name, the word stigmatize or stigma. And a stigmata, it typically is an outward sign that, that the Holy Spirit is uh, uh, at work in this person's life or this is a great person in God's eyes. And many of the venerated saints of the Catholic Church have have blood that appears and never stops flowing out of their palms or out of their feet or uh, from their forehead or or from their side where Jesus, one of the places where Jesus was pierced uh, is the place typically from the hands is where the stigmata will flow. Well, I don't believe in stigmata. Just to be honest with you, if you got... If you got stuff, blood flowing out of your hands, I probably, you can just be dismissed. Either that or be baptized, amen? But I don't believe in stigmata. There is, but I do believe, I believe in the stigmata. I believe that once you are baptized in his name, you receive his spirit. And if you, if you continue to walk with him, you don't need blood flowing from your hands and from your feet or from your head because you've got his blood flowing from your heart. It's a fountain of life springing up a well of life springing up and it sets you apart you may not have visible blood flowing but let me tell you something the people around you can tell they're like my goodness what has changed about that guy what has changed about scott that used to be locked up under the courthouse he's now sitting in here 20 years later praising god and opening the services what happened to this guy What happened? He's got something flowing in him. He's got something flowing through him that is different. It sets him apart. Let me tell you something, church. 
What sets this church apart from a lot of other churches right down the street is that we've got the blood flowing. Where is the life? The life is in two places. After all the blood had flowed out of Jesus' body, he said, it is finished. And then the Spirit, that Holy Spirit departed from him. And he spoke and he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? Why is this Spirit leaving me? Most churches are dead and dying because they don't have the Spirit. They don't have the blood flowing. They have access to it. My grandmother on my father's side, she never never came to our church or a church of our type until she was older in life. And she heard people as they received the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And she said, oh, that happened to me. That happened to me when she was 28 years old. She didn't really know what had happened because the ministry came to her and said, hey, you can't do that in here. They took her to the back room and said, you don't be doing that in here. You can't be filled with that spirit in here. Well, I want to tell you something. I want to proclaim something to you. As long as I am the pastor of this church, you can be filled with the Holy Ghost right here with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. As long as I'm the pastor here, you can be baptized in Jesus' name. As long as this church stands here, you can come and repent right now if you want to. You don't have to wait to be called. You can come right now. When the Lord calls your name, you run to this altar. Don't allow the enemy to steal the sacrifice. Don't allow the enemy to deceive you into thinking that there's another way. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, the life is in me, I am the life. The blood that flows through my veins is the only place that you can receive life in that more abundantly. And I hear preachers trying to cheer people up in in, in, the music, there's no wonder they're trying to cheer them up. I feel like taking some antidepressants sometime after listening to the music. But you know, that, I don't, that is not God's will. Uh, that, you can say what you want to say, and I, I actually specialize in psychology. You can say what you want to say, and I'm not cutting anybody down. But if you spend your day uh, taking handfuls of uh, anti-whatevers, okay, and, and you're still wrestling the needle out of your arm and the pistol out of your mouth, that is not the will of God for a Christian, for a child of God. If you are full of his spirit, if that blood is flowing through your veins and that spirit coursing through you, he said, we are to walk in newness of life. We are to have life and that more abundantly. We're not to be grubbing down here with the devil. I just want to tell you something. I, I do have, I've, I have anxiety from time to time, not, not clinical anxiety or anything I don't suppose, but I get nervous. And when I get nervous... There's someone that speaks to me who is a peace speaker. There's someone who lives inside of me that can calm me down. There's somebody, I don't need a psychiatrist because I got somebody that lives inside of me that can cheer me up. Amen? I've got the way, the truth, and the life. And I will not allow my enemy, my sworn enemy, to steal that from me. If you would stand, I'd like to ask the musicians to come, please. I'd like to ask the magicians to come. No. The sacrifice here, it has not ceased. The Holy Ghost baptizer is here. The blood never stops flowing here. 1 Peter chapter 3. Put that on the screen, please. Which sometimes we're disobedient. How many of you have been disobedient sometimes? 
<laughs> when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, God is long-suffering. He's not wanting to strike you dead or you'd be dead. He's not your enemy. He's your friend. While the ark was preparing, we're in few. That is, eight souls were saved by water. We got at least four, maybe six. It's going to be saved by water today. Back it up, back it up. Give me the previous one. Long suffering God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few that was eight souls were saved by water. Go on now. The like figure whereunto even baptism, even baptism, the immersion in water, doth also now what? I want every person, whether you believe a word I've said, can you quote some scripture for me? You may not believe a word I've said. But I want you to quote this with me. Like figure whereunto even, even, even baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away of filth of the flesh, but the answer of, good, of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection, by the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Today, we've got four people that are that are dying out to their sins. They've already repented of their sins. And we're going to pray a prayer of repentance right here before we baptize them. And then we're going to bury them in the blood of Christ. And they're going to be resurrected into newness of life. To never ever be the same. They're never going to be the same. Mark chapter 16. And this is a... This is a sobering thought but I want you to think about it if you've not made this decision I don't want to scare you well I'll scare you if it's what it takes if I can scare you into it okay that's a deal very sobering right here we celebrate the newness of life Kaylee that you're about to step into we celebrate the newness of life Emily that you're about to step into we celebrate that but there's a flip side to this and if you've not made this decision, I want you to read this scripture with me. It says, And he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. In other words, he that believes and is obedient unto baptism shall be saved. But he that believeth not He that believeth not. God's done everything he can do. He's done everything he can do. I've done everything I can do. Now it's up to you. Will you be saved? Will you pass through the water of salvation? Will you be washed in the blood? It's easy. It's just obedience. It may seem silly to some, but it's obedience. It is taking part in the blood sacrifice the way that the Scripture said to. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that my name is written. My name is written somewhere where you can't read it where nobody can break in and erase it and nobody can blot it out. It's written in the Lamb's book of life. And someday, when those books are open, it said there's books. It means more than one. It said the books are going to be open. And, and there's going to be one judge sitting there reading those books. And one book is going to have my transgressions. Your transgressions, your sins. You remember... You remember the worst thing you've ever done? That, that, but I'll tell you what, Emily, whenever they come to your name, I don't see anything there. It's all covered in blood. Matter of fact, it's not even there. It's been erased by the blood. It's been washed by the blood. 
It's been completely removed forever. I don't see, I don't see that you've ever done anything wrong. I don't see that you've ever done anything wrong. There's nothing on your account to pay. It's already been paid. Your account has been paid. It's all clear. You're free. And then another book will open. Let's see. I see Justin's name there. That Lamb's Book of Life. I see Jim's name there. I see Crystal's name there. Do you want your name to be there? I'm thankful that my name is written there. God bless you. Let's prepare for baptism.
this is a day that I've been praying for for a long time. I've been praying for you, and you didn't even know it. But you have been in many of my prayers. I'm so very thankful that God answers prayers. And uh, you're just one of my kids, and it's so good to see you home. And you know what? We'll just get to spend eternity as family. We'll get to spend eternity together. And um, today is the day. Today is the day that changes all other days. And Emily confessed to me today that, that she, she feels that she needs to be baptized today in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of her sins. She has repented of her sins. And upon a confession of that faith today, we're going to wash her today in this water mingled with blood. Farah Emily Gann, it is my profound pleasure and blessing to baptize you in the name that's above every name, in that name that will save you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin. I just met Kaylee, how long ago? A week ago. But you know, I've been praying for you for a long time too. Every day I pray for those I haven't met yet, for those that have not come through those doors yet. You are our harvest. You are you're why we exist. I'm just so thankful for you so thankful that you made the decision that you've made and so thankful you've repented of your sins you have you have been obedient unto using that first key of the kingdom and now we're about to use the second key and then the third key the lord's got that key and he'll open he'll use that key to open the the the, the door of your heart and fill you with his spirit fill you with that holy ghost Amen. Amen. Kaylee Marie Wells, it's my privilege to now baptize you in the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords for the remission of your sins. In Jesus' name.
we have five baptisms. Brittany has a royal, I told her this a few weeks ago, she has a royal uh, background. She is of the Mahaney uh, clan, yeah? And so she's, she's here today, I'm sure, as an answer to prayer that was prayed many, many years ago. Amen. And so... I'm so thankful. I, it's an honor to me. It's an honor to me to baptize anyone, but it is an honor to me to be able to to continue that heritage within your family that was that was given to you years and years ago. Let it never depart from you. Let it never depart from you. Teach your children and your children's children about this God that saved you today. Amen. Don Parker. Today is the day that your name shall be written in the Lamb's book of life. Today is the day that the blood of Jesus will cover you and all of your sins will be washed away. Though they are crimson, hallelujah, you will be washed as white as snow today. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus. I pray that you would cleanse me right now. Cast my sins away from me as far as the east is from the west. Hold me in your arms through eternity, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I now baptize you.
We have two men that are being prepared for baptism right now. Amen. And uh, I want to invite you that if you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, I'm going to give you that opportunity. While they're preparing, we'll have, have them coming out in just a moment. But I'm going to give you that opportunity. The reason that Jesus came is for you to be able to experience this. And not just today, but you get to experience this every day for the rest of your life. This gets to be the centerpiece of your life every day. Amen. So if you're thinking about it, if you're on the, if you are on the uh, uh, fence, get off the fence and get in the water. Amen. a few years ago of all things uh, he was he was brought into the house of God through kickboxing amen and uh, he's he is a pretty good student pretty good student but I got an opportunity to baptize him a few years ago but there's been a lot of a lot of water under the bridge since then and he's had he's the roads have gone through many turns since then and today he just wants to reconsecrate to God. He wants to reconsecrate to his commitment to the kingdom and to the king today. Amen.
Justin just uh, talked to me this morning and uh, before service and said, I want to be baptized today. He heard the message last week and said, I want to be baptized today. What a blessing. This is, this is what we pray for. This is what we work for. This is our harvest. My goodness, what a, what a tremendous way, what a tremendous way to start a year with, with five people giving their hearts to God, being washed in the blood, sanctified by the Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for you, Justin. I'm thankful for you. You just don't even know. I've been praying for you too. I just didn't know you. Amen. I'm going to continue praying for you. Hallelujah. Justin Matthew Hanley. (laughs) It is my great honor and privilege. Before God, standing in this pool of mercy, standing in this pool of blood, it is my pleasure and my honor to now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, for the remission of your sins. witnessed the greatest miracle of all. You've just witnessed five times in a row the greatest miracle of all is the forgiveness of sin, the redemption of sin. That is the greatest of all miracles. If there are no more, if there's any more, I ask you to please come now. Please come now. Please come now. God bless you. You may be dismissed. God bless you.